Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I want to share another topic from the DevNet Associate 200-901 exam curriculum. And that topic is how to perform a basic REST API call with Python. We're going to look at this using a free online resource that provides a working API to test against, and we'll use the documentation provided to construct a Python script for interacting with that API. Let's jump in and take a look. I'll point you to a really great free resource called fakestoreapi.com. And this is exactly what it sounds like. This is just a fake API that has been developed and put online so that we can perform testing. If we scroll through this site, one of the first things we'll see is some example code that we can try out. You'll see there are lists of the resources that are found here for this API. We see the supported HTTP methods. And of course, since we are making a request, we're going to use this get method. And you can see the different ways that we can pull from this particular API. We can pull products, we can pull categories and more. So we're gonna do that using a Python script and we're gonna point it to fakestoreapi.com. It's a really simple way that we can do this without a lot of work on the back end. So I'm gonna minimize my browser and I'm gonna go back into my Atom instance that we've worked in previously. You'll see that I already have a Python script, a blank Python script open here named api.py. So we're gonna start building inside of this. So as we said, we're going to use the Python requests library. It's another one of those built in libraries that we have in Python. It's one of our standards that we can use when we're making HTTP requests with Python. It takes a lot of the complexity out and it makes it really easy for us to do that. So let's look at how we can make a request using a Python script. So to begin with, we want to, of course, import our requests library. That's the library we're going to use. So we're gonna start here as we have with other libraries and we need to import that by saying import and the name of that is requests. Let's go down and make a new line and I'm going to create a variable named response and I'm gonna say equals requests.get. That's going to call a module from our requests library. I'm going to open up my brackets. I'm going to start a set of parentheses. And I'm actually gonna go back to my browser just to make it easy. And I'm gonna copy this URL and paste it inside of my Atom script, inside of my Python script. So there we go. Now we are making a get request out to fakestore.api. And some of the options that we were able to do there, if I go back to that browser, you'll see we could do forward slash products. So let's use that. Let's add that to the end of our URL. So fakestoreapi.com forward slash products. I'm going to go down and I'm going to say print response. I'll save this. Then I will control shift B to run it. And in our output window, notice we have a response response code 200. You should remember that from our HTTP response codes that we looked at. This is a code saying that everything was okay. Our response was successful. So even though we got a successful response, it's good to see that code. We didn't get any information. So let's say we want to see this output with JSON formatting. That's a very common way to do this. When we import our requests library, the JSON module is also imported by default with that. So at the end of our response print statement, we can say response.json. We can add another set of empty brackets. We can save this. We can run it. And you can see that now we have an output formatted in JSON formatting. Now it doesn't look that way in our output window. So one easy way to do this, one easy way we can format this for readability, let me show you something that you can add. If we go to our edit menu in Atom and preferences, this is in iOS by the way, that could be different depending on your operating system. If we go to the install option, you can search for something called Beautify. There's a package called Atom-Beautify and that will allow us to automatically format our information. It's really handy way to do that. So let me close this out because I already have this installed. As you can see, I have the uninstall button here. So I'm going to close my settings window. And what I'm going to do in this bottom output window, notice there's a button here that looks like a page. 
and that will allow us to show the output in a new tab. I'm going to click that and you'll see a new tab opens. Now at the top of this, it starts with my Python command. I'm going to delete that out of there because I'm not really interested in that. And now I'm going to just save this particular output and I'm going to call that products.json to save that as a JSON file. And when I do that, you'll notice that JSON formatting pops into place automatically. It automatically recognizes that. It begins to color code that. Now, if we want to get that looking even better, even more readable, we can use that beautify option that we installed. And to do that automatically, while we're inside of this active tab, I can hit Control Alt B and look at that. It formats everything in a really nicely readable JSON format. So we can scroll down here and you can see all of the products inside this fake store API. Really handy way to do that. Really easy way to make a get request with Python. So what else could we do? Because if you'll notice, this is a lot of information. There are tons and tons of products here. Well, we can also pass certain parameters into that. When we're making an API call, parameters essentially outline the scope. Or in other words, they clarify the request. We can limit what we are requesting by adding parameters. So let's talk about how we can do that very easily with a Python script. Let's go back to my API Python script. So what I'm going to do right underneath my import area where I imported my request library, I'm going to set a new variable called parameters, and I'm going to set that equal to, and I'm going to open up some curly brackets. And I'm going to say quotation limit colon one. Now, again, you can find information about these parameters in the fake API store website. They have great documentation there. This isn't necessarily something that you need to know how to do, but just understand how it works. So now what I've done is I've created a parameter that is going to limit my get request to only a single instance of a product. Now for this to work, I also want to go inside my get request and I want to say comma params, that's what we want to use to call that out, equals parameters. Let's save this and let's run it. And this time we should have a much smaller output. If we scroll to the right, you'll see that is indeed much smaller. Let's also open this in a new tab so that we can format this. I'm going to save it. I'll call it products2.json. I'm going to control alt B to beautify that. And now you'll see that we only have a single instance here as we've called out with our parameters. We've only called back a single product. And of course, we can see all of the important information related to that. So fairly simple to do. If we go back to this Python program, it's a pretty simple program, fairly easy to make those calls. Now, of course, we could go back to our website and use some of these other parameters if we'd like to with these get requests. And you'll notice that this even supports post, put, patch, and delete HTTP methods as well. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, I definitely recommend that free resource. It's a great way to perform some practice using API calls. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.